Welcome to this uh, demonstration video that would show the basic features and functionalities of uh, SpecTrack. The software is designed to be used uh, in tracking uh, objects that are to be observed with uh, slit spectrographs such as batches manufactured by Butter Planetarium. Um, the application uh, window is uh, divided into four segments. Uh, the top left segment includes all the controls and, and they are split uh, under uh, in the four tabs uh, setup tab, guide tab, RCU, which stands for the remote calibration unit tab, and the scope tab. Uh, a bit to the right, uh, there's a set of uh, handy control buttons. Uh, the right top panel is the uh, image display uh, area. Uh, Going to the bottom right side, we have the uh, error plot display area uh, and the bottom left panel is the spectra clock. Um, uh, to begin with, um, let's uh, load the configuration that has been saved before. Uh, this is very easy to do uh, using the save as button. Uh, as you see, the uh, camera driver and the telescope driver have loaded automatically. Um, we have access to the configuration window that is supplied by the camera driver. Of course, this, uh, this, in this case, only one camera is present, so we can change the settings of the camera. This can be done at uh, any time. Um, a similar uh, configuration window appears uh, when we select the scope configuration button. Here we can connect to a telescope of choice. And this time we will use the uh, Astro-Optic Server Telescope. The RCU uh, unit uh, just needs an IP address, uh, which has been saved before in the configuration. Um, so these are all the components that we need to connect to. So this can be done with a simple uh, this uh, connect all button. As you can see, the uh, guide camera and scope uh, uh, buttons are now green, and this means that uh, the connections uh, were successful. Um, there's also information in the log. Um, so if we move to the guide tab, uh, we can capture a frame from the camera. Obviously, there's nothing visible right now. Um, the dome is open, the mirror covers are open as well, the focusing is set uh, to proper values, so we can slow to a predefined target to demonstrate the uh, tracking capabilities of SpecTrack. To control exposure time and gain settings of the camera, uh, we can use this uh, handy preset feature. It allows us to select uh, proper values. Um, uh, so if we select star now and we capture this frame, we will see that the star, um, the telescope uh, slew to is present in the field of view. Uh, we can now um, center the star. Of course, the system is calibrated properly, so uh, it will it will uh, move the star towards the slit, uh, hopefully centering it like it did in this case. Assuming that we have uh, a fresh setup, um, I will demonstrate how to calibrate the system so the so SpecTrack knows uh, what's the orientation of the camera uh, respective to the right ascension and declination axis and also uh, what's the pixel scale of the camera. So uh, this can be done using the calibrate feature. Uh, there are two calibration options that uh, can be chosen. The first is slow mode, uh, which uses slowing uh, capabilities of the mount. And the other is uh, pulse mode, which uh, moves the mount using pulse commands. Uh, the first mode is suitable and recommended for uh, mounts that are high precision mounts and do not have backlash. Pulse mode uh, is recommended for uh, mounts that might have backlash and are, and are not as precise. So let's try uh, slow mode. Uh, the telescope will move to several positions. Uh, the, uh, the log will update the information and also the frames will be presented uh, on the screen. So you can see 
how the telescope moves uh, to calibrate the images and um, therefore uh, compute the calibration matrix that, uh, uh, that is presented over here. Calibration is done and uh, it's successful, so we can save the settings. And now, as you can see, uh, if we switch to uh, live view, uh, we can center the star and it will behave um, as expected. If we change the display settings, for example, to flat and uh, switch on the flat lamp and the remote calibration unit, we can also see the exact place where the slit is located and this can be used um, to define the position of the slit. Um, so to do this, just click the define slit button and then we can exactly show where the slit is. The, uh, the guiding box will always be centered on the center of the, uh, of the slit, but we can change the, uh, the dimensions of the box to, the, to get the desired shape, for example, um, exclude a nearby star uh, from the tracking uh, area that is used. So uh, the tracking mechanism works in such a way that uh, the star is always centered within the larger tracking box. Uh, it's not sensitive to the gap in the, in the starlight that is caused by the slit. Um, and it's also very practical to be to use uh, in other non-standard tracking applications. SpecTrack uh, settings are accessible using uh, the settings button. Um, from top, uh, we have uh, we can configure the behavior on Meridian Flip. Uh, how to how the axis flip? This this is sometimes important when uh, calibration doesn't work. Uh, every driver has its uh, own uh, specific rules that uh, define the way coordinates are um, used. The calibration matrix is the is a set of four numbers that define the um, orientation of the camera uh, relative to the uh, right ascension and declination axis. Um, the calibration move. Uh, arc second is the amount of arc seconds that the telescope will move in each axis during uh, slew mode and calibration. Calibration pulse duration is the length of the pulse that will be sent to the mount during the second uh, calibration mode, which is pulse mode. Um, then we have some uh, other uh, image detection and telescope specific configuration options. Um, we also have the uh, RCU part, uh, which includes the, the IP address, as well as the uh, setting, port setting. This is important if you have a non-standard set of ports. Uh, um, there are three types of ports that are required to operate the RCU. This is the thorium argon port, the flat port, and the flip mirror port. Uh, what is important is to have the numbers uh, port number entered properly. Um, the uh, right slit pixel coordinates and uh, left and right. Then we have the settings of the slit coordinates. Uh, this is defined with the, with the mouse uh, drawing, so it's very easy. Uh, then we have some default options like guider sensitivity and the width of the guide box, the default values. Um, and also some uh, auto exposure uh, settings that uh, may be important. Also the uh, preset, uh, the exposure preset list is available here. Um, it's easy to add new settings. Uh, let's call this, for example, um, planet and we want the exposure time to be uh, 0 0.02 seconds and the gain to be 300. 
Um, if for some reason the required gain is not uh, available with the given camera, of course, um, the lowest or the highest possible will, will be set. So this is the overview of the settings uh, dialog. So now let's see if we want to switch on the live view and we start guiding. Um, you'll see the, uh, the guide plot uh, update itself. Uh, unfortunately tonight the conditions are not very good. The seeing is very bad and it's, uh, it's very windy. Um, so uh, yeah, the mount will struggle with uh, keeping the camera, the, the, the star um, in the slit.